So here we are. It has been finished on the cross. And now in here in Mark 15, 42 through 47, we read about the burial of Jesus. When we talk about the gospel and when it comes to this Holy Week especially, it's easy sometimes to focus on the crucifixion and on the resurrection. Of course, those are essential and and those are significant, of course. But we should also be sure not to overlook the details of God's perfect plan in the burial of Jesus as well. The burial of Jesus is no less significant and no less orchestrated by God's sovereign design. Let's take a look at these passages together for a minute. It's found on page 853 in the, the Bible and the chairs there in front of you. And it's Mark 15, 42 through 47. It says, And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to have hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether the, he was already dead. And when he had learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, was where he was, saw where he was laid. Though this is a fairly short set of passages, uh, they're packed with some amazing facts. And they continue to put God's sovereignty and His perfect plan on display. As I've studied through this, um, I'm going to break this down verse by verse. And uh, I kind of put my notes to each verse um, and gave each one a title a little bit of kind of my thoughts. In verse 42, I put down that it was God's perfect timing. 42 says... And when evening had come since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So this verse really sets up the timeline and urgency of what Joseph is doing here. In Jewish custom, evening can be described as as time between the evenings. So in other words, the time from sunset to darkness. From what is derived from Scripture... In history, Jesus died about 3 p.m. So therefore, you can see that it was critical that Jesus be buried before sundown. Why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First one is because the work of burying Jesus had to be completed before the Sabbath began. For no Jew would even think of doing work on that day. Number two... Jewish law was also that dead bodies should not remain hanging on a tree overnight. Deuteronomy 21.23 says, His body shall not remain all night on the tree, but you shall bury him the same day, for an hanged man is cursed by God. You shall not defile your land that your, the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. In addition, we have the fulfillment of Scripture and Jesus' own words. The Son of Man will rise from the dead in three days. Jesus needed to be in the grave on Friday to rise from the dead on Sunday. Verse 43, I titled it as, What Courage? So Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. That's verse 43. 
So here's another amazing example of God using some perhaps totally unexpected, someone unexpected for his plans and purpose. Who is this Joseph? Joseph was from Arimathea and was now a resident of Jerusalem. Our scripture calls him a respected member of council, a part of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish court who condemned Jesus and brought him to Pilate. Joseph was connected, he was respected, and he was wealthy. Verse 43 also says that Joseph himself was looking for the kingdom of God. This indicates to, that some degree Joseph was showing some level of faith and or displaying signs of future potential of faith in Jesus Christ as king in that kingdom of God. It says in our text that Joseph took courage and went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Imagine that in the stature that he was in. No one was asking him to do it. No one was making him do it. But yet, Joseph took great courage to ask for Jesus' body. Strangely enough, everyone else that claimed that they would never leave Jesus' side have all fled. But Joseph stood alone in courage and boldly identified himself with Jesus. His actions could have cost him everything. His reputation, his position, even his family, and his life. Joseph's courage allowed Jesus to be provided a proper burial. For those who had been crucified in this time, the normal custom was to toss the body into a common grave with the rest of the criminals. That's what was intended for Jesus. But instead, through this man Joseph, Isaiah 53, 9 is fulfilled. And they made his grave with the wicked, it says, and with a rich man in his death. How amazing and remarkable it is to see God's ability to use and fulfill his plans with the most unexpected source. But here we see it in Joseph. Verses 44 through 45, I, I titled it, Jesus was in fact dead. Starting in 44, it says, Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he had learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. So Pilate was surprised about hearing that he was dead. Why is that? Why was he so surprised? Well, it was common that when someone was crucified that it could typically take two or three days for them to die. That is why sometimes they'd speed up the process. The Romans would break the legs of the person so that they could no longer hold their bodies up to help them breathe on the cross. Their hands are outstretched and their tendons are pulled and they have to arch their back and hold themselves up to try to breathe. So they would break their legs so that they, they couldn't to try to speed that up. But our Jesus' legs did not get broken. Psalm 34, 20 says, Not a bone of him shall be broken. Exodus 12, 36 says, The Passover lamb cannot have broken limbs. So Pilate was surprised to hear this. So we asked the centurion to verify it. And the centurion comes back and confirms it. It was an eyewitness account. It was confirmed. There was no question. And so Pilate releases Jesus' body to Joseph. This alone displays God's hand in these passages. It would have been unheard of for Pilate to release the body of a criminal to anyone other than a relative, especially one condemned for high treason. But he did. 
verse 46 I, I titled it, Careful Preparations. In verse 46 it says, And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in it, in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Joseph didn't cut any corners here. As he returned to Golgotha, he purchased the burial cloth that was needed. He also would have likely purchased expensive, necessary spices and all that was needed for a proper Jewish burial. He prepared Jesus' body for burial, wrapping him in the linen cloth. He laid him in the tomb, and then he rolls a stone over the entrance to seal it. Now, the tomb would have likely had Shelves in it. It was, a, it was like a cave cut into the rock, into the stone. And inside it, it likely would have had shelves carved into the stone to place bodies upon it. Once the bodies decomposed and the bones would have been collected and placed into a box called an ossuary, the box would be taken somewhere else and the tomb would be ready for the next person who was, dies to be placed on the shelf. That's how it was done. This tomb may not have been planned for Jesus by man, but it surely was part of God's plan. Verse 47. I titled this one, It's No Secret. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where he was laid. That's what it says in verse 47. It's important to point out here that what some would call unimportant women are still here. They have not fled with the others. It would seem that much like Joseph, they are not concerned with what people knowing their loyalty and love for Jesus. They too stay boldly, courageously showing their love for Jesus as his true disciples. So much as to even follow all the way to Jesus' grave. Though this verse 47 is small and short, it really speaks volumes. Notice what it says. They saw where he was laid. Let there be no mistake. These women knew where to return. For they saw where he was laid. There would be no case of wrong address on Sunday. Though these passages, uh, through these passages, it's uh, it's amazing to see the courage, the boldness, and the love for Jesus on display by Joseph and these women. It's astounding to see God's perfectly, sovereignly working out His plan through these unlikely people. We should be challenged by these words. Do we too identify this closely with Jesus? Do we stay by his side without concern for what others are going to think? Or what may become of us? Even as we await Jesus' return, will we stay close to him? Or will we abandon hope and run? afraid of what it may cost us. So now, we come to tomorrow, Saturday. Friday will have passed, and we know what is coming on Sunday. Jesus' followers on that first Saturday were likely full of doubt and question. Was Jesus really the Messiah? What will they do now? What will happen next? Praise God that today, as Jesus' followers, we can live in confidence, in expectation, and full of hope because Jesus has resurrected and he is coming back. We have witnessed Jesus' suffering and condemnation, we have witnessed Jesus' crucifixion. 
We have witnessed Jesus' death. And we have witnessed Jesus' burial. Now, we wait for Sunday. Death and evil haven't won.